Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a closer look at all key for applications. And this was a piece of software that was bundled in the Windows XPC unofficial Windows version which I did a video on a couple of days ago. You might want to go ahead and check that out up in the cards if you haven't seen that. But I had uh, mentioned that this program was in XPC and I talked a little bit about what it did. But I actually received a few comments from you guys asking me to go more in depth into this program. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a dedicated video focusing on all key for applications and talking about uh, what it is, what it can do, and why you might want to use it if you're still using Windows XP on one of your computers. So in a nutshell, all key for applications is similar to another program called Kernel X, which I've also demonstrated on this channel as well. And what Kernel X did is it provided a compatibility layer for Windows 9X based operating systems that allowed you to run some more up-to-date programs that were designed for Windows 2000 and some for even Windows XP. Well, all key for applications is essentially that same idea, but it's to be installed on Windows XP, which will allow you to run some Windows Vista programs to just enable you to get access to some more up-to-date software, which is definitely very useful because Windows XP has been out of support for over four years now, almost five years uh, come April. And um, Windows Vista, while it did, uh, while support ended for Windows Vista in 2017, there are still newer programs that you can get on Vista that you can't get on XP. Newer web browsers, newer office suites, newer games, just newer programs in general that you would probably be better off running uh, that version rather than an ancient version made for XP. So this is the website right here. It's at allkey, A-L-K-Y, for applications.net. And it's a very, very simple website, and you have two different download links on here. The first one is for the All Key for Applications installer for Windows XP, the actual executable that you want to download for this program. And the second one here is the Windows Sidebar installer, which I believe is what that the developers of Windows XPC were using to get the sidebar running in Windows XP. So we're going to be trying out that as well. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and take a look at that. So in this uh, downloads folder right here, I have uh, downloaded both of these zip files. We're going to first actually install all key for applications. So we'll just go through this setup here. So there's also this pretty cool feature that allows you to bind this program to a Windows Vista product key. Now I don't have one of those at the moment, but if you did and you were installing, I mean, mainly I would think this would work with Microsoft software to verify that the OS is genuine. You could basically give it a key to use to you know, trick the application into thinking that it's running on a genuine copy of Windows. While your key is gonna be a genuine key, it's gonna have to be a genuine key for this to work. Um, if the program is looking for a genuine Windows Vista product key, it won't find one unless you do this. So we're not going to worry about that at the moment. We're just going to go ahead and click on next. And that's it. Just hit install. So let's take a look at actually running a Windows Vista program in XP and see how that works. So we're going to start off with the Windows Vista sidebar. Now to install this, we have to right click on the sidebar setup information and click on install. And this will actually, you know, prompt you, do you want to install the Windows sidebar? We'll say yes. And on reboot, you can see that the Windows Vista sidebar has opened up and check that out. It is fully working. We have the Windows Vista sidebar here. We can go ahead and close out of it. We can open it back up. It works just like you would expect it to. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at our first set of applications here. And those are the Windows Vista games. Now, you guys might remember this executable file right here, this uh, setup wizard from my Windows 7 games in Windows 8 and Windows 10 series of videos where I showed you how to get the old games from Windows 7 and from Windows Vista back on Windows 10. Well, some of those games were specifically for Windows Vista, particularly Tinker, um, Inkball, and Hold'em. These were all applications that were designed for Windows Vista. These were not on XP. So when we try to uh, run it here, you see we get this error saying that it's not a valid Win32 application. So how can we fix that? Well, it's actually very simple with all key for applications. All you do is you go into my computer here, go into the folder where your application is, so that's going to be in Microsoft Games, 
and we're going to try out ink ball first so just to confirm again when i try to run this by itself it gives this error message right here so how do we enable all key for applications well all you have to do is right click on the file and click patch and run vista executable and what this will do is it will actually create a manifest file it will patch the application and it will start it so you see right here we are now running ink ball this is going to fully work we can go ahead and uh, start the game so yes we can play ink ball i actually showed this game off in my geek xp video which was another unofficial windows version that i uh, took a look at but that was the tablet pc version of ink ball this is the uh, game from vista and as you can see it works perfectly fine now what's cool about this is once you patch the uh, windows vista executable and it creates this dot manifest file you can then run the application normally so you see i i, I don't have to go in here and right click on it again and click on patch it's already patched so i can just run it normally by double clicking on it like i would any other application so that's essentially how it works again it's very very simple let's go ahead and try out a uh, hold'em here so hold'em is probably going to do the same thing yep it says it's on a valid win32 application we'll right click on it patch and run vista executable and it should create that uh, manifest file again. Now this here throws up an unable to locate component error. It's not able to find this DLL file that I assume Windows Vista and above had. So like I said, there are going to be applications that don't work. This is not a guarantee to work with every application out there. So let's go ahead and uh, try out Tinker as well. So we will go ahead and right click on here. Well, first let's see what happens when we, when we try to run it. Okay, it throws up the same error. So we'll click OK and we'll patch and run Vista executable. And it looks like it throws up an error as well. The procedure entry point um, code page function could not be located in the dynamic link library VM SVCRT.dll or CT.dll. So it looks like it's another DLL file that we just don't have in XP. So one thing I do want to try is let me actually open up my computer here to show you what we're going to be doing. So I've got a copy of Halo 2 in this uh, computer's drive right now. And Halo 2 was a game that I tried multiple ways of getting it to run on, on XP. I just could never get it to work. It, it was literally designed specifically for Vista. I think I even had problems getting it to work on Windows 7 because it wasn't Windows Vista. And like when you would try to launch it, it would say this can only work with Windows Vista. So we're going to try to run the startup file right here and we get a dynamic link error with a DLL file, which doesn't sound like a good uh, sign from the beginning because that's what those other errors were. So let's go ahead and right click on it and patch it and run Vista executable. And oh, what the heck just happened? Apparently it just killed Explorer for some reason. Maybe it's because it's on the CD, it's trying to, to write something to it. Okay, so for some reason when I try to run the startup executable file it just crashes and it kills explorer which is interesting I th i'm thinking that might have something to do with the fact that it's trying to write a you know that manifest file it's trying to write that to the cd because it's in the same folder as the executable so i'm trying now to just i'm copying everything over onto the hard drive into a folder on the desktop here and we're going to try to run it from there. Okay, so we've got all of the Halo 2 files copied over to the desktop, and we're going to go ahead and try to patch and run this as a Vista executable. So, okay, so it's giving us a different error, but it says this program requires Microsoft Windows Vista or Windows 2003 server. That's interesting because the <laughs> sure, 2003 server is based on XP. That's really interesting. I did not even know that. Plus, why would you install Halo 2 on Windows 2003 server? So, yeah, it it just doesn't... Uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> looks like it did launch. You just had to relaunch the application. Um, so let's, let's try to actually install this. We'll go ahead and click on Play Halo 2 for Windows Vista. And, okay, so it's coming up with some compatibility problems. Well, we're able to install the map editor yeah so we can actually go through and yeah so we can install the map editor but the actual game we're, we're having trouble all right so the halo 2 map editor has just finished installing it looks like we're not going to be able to run the startup application or, or well to get the the actual game to work because there doesn't appear to be a separate um file we can install the map editor which we just did but when you try to hit play halo 2 for windows vista it just comes up with this here and yeah that is still running under the startup process if i go 
and do uh, go to process, you see startup.exe. So, like I said, there are some games that, are, and just some programs in general, that you're not going to be able to get to work. Halo 2 looks to be one of them. But there you have it. That is essentially a brief look at all key for applications. Again, it's just a very useful tool that, you know, and this is the uh, map editor trying to launch here. Um, but it's just, it's a very useful tool that you can use to, you know, attempt to run some Windows Vista applications on Windows XP. It's kind of like a compatibility layer for Windows XP, similar to how Kernel X was. Again, like I've said multiple times in this video, you're not going to be able to get every Windows Vista program to run, but you'll definitely have a better chance at getting them to run using this program than you would just running it outright. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up, be sure to get subscribed down below, and turn on channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload new videos on this channel, which I do every single week. Week. And be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your guys' thoughts on this program. Is this something that you guys would like to use? Is, it, is this something that you have used and uh, have experience with? Be sure to let me know as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.